Welcome back to La Vida Rosa. I'm your host Pinky and today we're going to be talking about Married at First Sight Season 11. So if you'd like to see more then just stay tuned. Don't forget to check out my website LaVidaRosaStyle.com where you can find cute accessories like the ones I'm wearing right now. These are some of my best sellers. The link is down below. Like, comment, and subscribe and without further ado let's get into this video so shout out to everyone who's come back for my married at first sight reviews i feel like a lot of my new subscribers have come from these reviews so shout out to y'all i cannot wait to see what y'all have to say down in the comments like i'm really not into the two hour episodes just like last time i feel like a lot of it is filler i in case y'all missed it i already talked about the matchmaking special i did a live last week so if y'all want to hear more in depth of how I feel about the first impressions of each person then go check that out um but yeah I feel like a lot of the clips from that were in this one it's just like I hate the fact that they're trying to like stretch out these episodes to be two hours when they really could just be one you know what I'm saying one and done but anyway let's just go ahead and get started with the couples because y'all already know what I want to talk about so I'm trying to hurry up and get there <sighs> So this episode showed all of the participants telling their friends and family that they are going to be married at first sight. And um, also it's them choosing their wedding dresses and tuxes and, you know, just their overall feelings of excitement and nervousness. The first couple is Christina and Henry. So when Christina told her mom she was very excited, it seems as though her mom has been a part of um the application process it seems like she has been through this entire process with her so she's more so just excited that she actually got picked and you know she's on the journey with her so she's so excited for her daughter she her christina ends up asking her mother to walk her down the aisle which i thought was so beautiful such a sweet thing to ask apparently her father has not been in her life so it's just a beautiful thing that she is so close with her mom that she wants her mom to walk her down the aisle just a little bit about christina she said in the past she usually picks the wrong guy a player type of guy and she talks about never receiving flowers from a man the only man she's ever received flowers from was her when she started crying about it i don't think it's necessarily the flowers i think it's she just she I can identify with feeling abandoned by your father, daddy issues. I feel like it's a little bit of that. And then, you know, you choose men who are unavailable. It's a pattern. Hopefully who the experts have chosen will break that pattern for her. And she will finally have a man that she is looking for that's thoughtful and puts her first in the relationship so we'll see how her and henry uh interact and mix and mingle he seems like the perfect guy for that honestly so speaking of henry when he told his friends and um these one of his friends has been his friend since kindergarten so that just shows you how good of a friend he is um because you you don't see that every day but um they were both very supportive of him a little bit about henry is he used to be heavy set and he said he had kind of like low self-esteem from being overweight you could tell that he's a little reserved and that he might be holding back a little bit so i hope that he's willing to open up to this experience one thing that stuck out to me about henry is that he has a female best friend i don't know how that is going to mesh with him being married like a lot of women don't a lot of women are not comfortable with their husband having a female best friend especially a very attractive one because you just never know like she might have been friends on him this whole entire time and then finally see him marry and then be like well hmm what have i been missing so i think that's like you know especially if, if you're marrying someone you don't know at all you don't know this person it could make you feel a little bit insecure about like where what kind of relationship do y'all really have you know what i'm saying so next let's talk about amani and woody so amani seems to have a great circle of friends that were very supportive and excited for her that she's going to be getting married at first sight i'm sure they probably already have been a part of the process with her too and they were also concerned if she'll be able to trust 
a, a new man especially a stranger because of what she's been through apparently she dated this one man that turned out to be married honey i could see how that could affect the way you uh just give out trust and you know having walls up and all that so hopefully you know hopefully she don't have to deal with too much with woody child let's move on to woody um so woody and uh so we already know that woody and miles are good friends on this show they're both getting married at first sight we'll get to miles in a minute um i already told y'all that woody gave me nate vibes i already told y'all i told y'all that why did everybody confirm everything i felt about woody whenever he told his friends that he was getting married at first sight didn't nobody have faith in woody that he would be a good husband didn't nobody have faith in him everybody was like you 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 want to get woody stay out all night and party woody do what i want to do woody bachelor pad woody want to get married i mean they basically was like boy bye they basically was like, boy, bye. You know you ain't ready to be nobody's husband. They didn't even sugarcoat it on camera. I like I can imagine how it how it would have actually been had they not been on camera. Like they really they went in on Woody and I was like, oh my goodness. I all of my suspicions were confirmed right then and there. I was like, because I kind of felt bad. I was like, I, I didn't want to judge him. But when I saw this, when I saw him getting dressed and I saw him put this hat on and this outfit. I already knew. I already knew. And I also wanted to mention the braids told me a lot too. That hairstyle of having braids and then like the haircut on the side. It said a lot. And then he had, I thought it was a mistake, but he had a little cross in the back. So that means he had a design. I just, all of this together, all of that together, it just, I don't know how this is going to mesh with Imani because she already has trust issues. Hopefully, Woody proves us all wrong and turns out to be an amazing husband. But I just don't feel like Woody is is ready. Because you have to do... You can't just go from a bachelor and, and a player to all of a sudden a family man. It just doesn't work like that. You have to get in the mindset first. And Woody just don't seem like he's ready for that. But we'll see. Let's move on to Benny and Amelia the quirky and eccentric couple i said on my last live i bennett just don't seem like he would sign up for something like this bennett or amelia don't seem like they would do something like this he just seems like he would want to more so go with the flow to find somebody and his friends were kind of like the same way like why why are you doing this like one of them was supportive but the rest of them was just like yeah i doubt this will work i think i i but i think what they're thinking is they'll never be able to find someone to match his you know quirkiness but little do they know <laughs> little do they know they may have found his perfect match when it comes to that honestly i don't even know if bennett understands the gravity of the situation of getting married i hope he does but it just doesn't seem like he's grasping it all the way when amelia told her friends they were also extremely skeptical and once again they were i think they know how different she is just like Bennett's friend and they're like how could they possibly find somebody on her level i think they did i think they did they asked her what type of man would she want and she doesn't want a doctor she would rather have a man that will stay home so this sounds like a perfect match y'all that's what she wants she would like to have a stay-at-home father and i think that bennett he seems like a really big family guy so i think he would be actually really good at in that role so um i'm really excited to see how their personalities mesh because they really do seem like a perfect match i found it hilarious that bennett had this gold and red like beaded <laughs> hat that he wanted to wear for his wedding day and it's hilarious because I feel like my grandma has that same hat. <laughs> she loves hats like that. And it just cracked me up that he really wanted to find a suit that matched that. It's like, Benny, you're going to have to get something custom made, honey. You ain't going to find nothing in no bridal shop to match that hat. You should have went to a thrift store. You probably would have found something better if you went to a thrift store to match that hat. Let's talk about Olivia and Brett. 
when Olivia told her mom about getting married at first sight, her mom's face completely dropped. Like, she was... It seems like her mom knew she was going to do this, but she was hoping that she did not get chosen. And, oh, it's always cringy when the parents react that way. Um, she was truly, like, very concerned about her marrying a stranger. But at the end of the day, she's just going to support her. And when Brett told his family, they... <laughs> Uh, Brett was kind of a jerk to his own family. I was like, what is going on? The way they talk to each other is a little crazy. And it, I just hope he doesn't feel, I hope he doesn't talk to his wife like the way he talks to his family because they talk to each other a little rough. His whole family was thrown off guard as if he did not give them a heads up that he was doing this. Like they were in complete shock, especially his father. He was trying to he was he was trying to be the voice of reason the whole time, but uh yeah, Brett wasn't trying to hear it. Um his father thinks it's completely ridiculous. And um honestly I think he Brett gets his personality from his father. So I don't know why his daddy was trying to act so shocked. Um and whenever the family would ask him questions, he was just being very sarcastic and rude. And I'm just like, well maybe that's just how they talk with each other. But Brett just acts like that with everybody, as we'll see further along. One thing I did notice when Olivia was picking out her dress, that she was very, very, very picky and very critical of herself. And Brett is very focused on looks. Like, that's his main thing. That's the main thing he talked about. He didn't really talk about any other character trait. He didn't really talk about any character trait that he was looking for in a woman. He strictly was talking about looks. So I just, uh, I just hate the fact that she's, you know, critical of herself. They showed her working out on a bike and he was talking about how he wanted somebody that was already fit. I just, I just, I just feel like this is going to be a Zach number two. And I, I definitely get Zach vibes from him and I'm just, I'm already clutching my pearls. I, I, I don't want this to affect her self-esteem negatively. Karen and Miles. <laughs> when she told her mother about her being chosen to get married at first sight, her mother was very against it. She asked her if she lost her mind. And, <laughs> and was dead serious. Honestly, this, this her reaction is... The most accurate to how my grandmother would react if I were to tell her I was doing something like this. That would be her exact reaction. And she would be also upset that I would even have the audacity to tell her on camera first. So her mom, even though her mom had a very like, her mom did not react well at all. It was very relatable. Um... <laughs> She uh she didn't think she would actually go through with this. She thinks it's a very bizarre situation, which is understandable. I mean, it is. That was that for that meeting. I feel like her mother was really trying to talk her out of it, Loki, and try to shame her out of it. It just seems like it because... And then whoever was sitting next to her, I don't know if that was her auntie or, or whoever, but she was just like, mm-hmm, this is crazy. She didn't say it, but she was just like... Then they went dress shopping and her mother was still really against it. It seemed like she was still trying to convince her even then while they were dress shopping. But once she found the dress she was looking for and she saw that it was a gorgeous dress, I think she finally kind of gave into the fact that this was happening and, you know, kind of gave her support then. But the whole time, Karen was very apprehensive, like to the point where she might have a panic attack. Like sh this whole episode, Karen is very apprehensive, very like, girl, like take a breath. It will be okay. Like, do you really want to do this or not? That's, that's what I was getting from her the whole episode. Then we have Miles. And when he told his grandparents, um, but he did say his parents divorced at nine. He always felt some type of way about the fact that his parents didn't stay together and so he wants to be like his grandparents who've been married for uh, 55 years so that was like a great example for him that's something that he strives for when it comes to marriage um he's when he told them they were completely caught off guard they was like what like they were complete it's like they had no idea he was doing this at all but they were very supportive anyway 
Even though they were skeptical, they was like, I can never do nothing like that, but I will be at the wedding. Miles and Woody went to go meet up with their friends. Even though they were they were completely throwing Woody under the bus, they were completely bigging up Miles. Like they were saying, I totally see this from you. Like his sister, everybody was saying how they they completely understood why he would do something like this and that, that he would make a great husband y'all i love miles i love miles i just like he and i haven't felt this way about somebody on this show in a long time like none of the contestants have really stuck out the way miles has like when they first introduced miles i was like wow he's gonna make somebody a great husband and you know just the fact that he is so open with his emotions and he's sensitive and he's you know putting it all out there how he feels and you know how he wants to look good like he wanted to find a suit that wowed his wife like usually you hear women say oh i want a dress that's gonna wow my husband you don't usually hear men say things like that so he he kind of like but immediately became my favorite already so it's just so disappointing to hear what happens later but we're gonna get to it we're gonna get to meet up with each other they have like a little uh meetings together before they go and have their little bachelor and bachelorette parties. Brett was very drunk. Like he got progressively drunker and was slurring his words throughout the night. But I feel like he was drunk when he first got there. Just, just from how he was talking, he gives me a false vibrato, um, you know, putting on a show for everybody, you know, have the most machismo attitude towards this situation. They all had the fear of possibly seeing the person or knowing the person like everybody has had already had that. But just the way he conveyed it, just like, what, you know, what if I, I already saw her and I didn't want her. It's just like, boy, bye, sit down. And then he said something to me that was completely out of line and should have been a red flag to any any sort of like producer that was watching that he said if there's no attraction then there's no point and i know this is not an elimination show but i feel like he should have been elim eliminated right then and there like if you have that attitude towards this experience you should not be in this experience if you're going to be that shallow you're marrying somebody. You're not dating somebody at first sight. You are marrying somebody at first sight. So if you feel like you're not attracted to that person at first sight and you don't feel like attraction can grow, why are you here? And better question, why are the <laughs> why are you not being sent home? Why are you still being allowed to marry someone with this terrible attitude? Him and Woody just kept digging a hole all night. Then we find out that Bennett has never ever had a smartphone at all ever and he actually has a flip phone and that makes me think he must not have any sort of social media either like whatsoever and i thought that was amazing especially for someone how old is benny especially for someone who's 28 for him to not have any social media or no smartphone and literally have no desire for that that is completely unique and something that that's not something you find every day in that age group at at all that is like i feel like that puts him in a totally different category than i thought he was in you know it's one thing to be eccentric and you know have different views about this and that but he don't have no sort of social media so then move on to the bachelor and bachelorette parties debauchery just pretty much what happens at every bachelor and bachelorette party the thing that stuck out the most is that brett ended up flirting with henry's friend first of all he came in and barged in it was already three people sitting on the bench and he just barged in and sat right up on her with his arm around her which is already a creep move and then he kind of accuses them of having some sort of secret relationship <laughs> or something while flirting it was really weird and so he ended up clearing out that entire like space like one by one they got up and left him sitting there on the bench alone and i guess he felt some type of way about that because he left early it was seemed like he was trying to flirt with, with whatever woman he came in contact with all night and you're supposed to be getting married 
the day of Karen and Miles wedding she was like visibly upset like when her friends came to see her she was visibly upset she had been crying I thought maybe her mom had got to her because her mom was very adamant about her not doing this and so I thought maybe her mom got to her and all and she was already you know completely apprehensive but it turns out that she got a text with his name and of course if you get a text if you start talking to somebody and you find out their instagram name twitter name you're going to look them up okay facebook you're going to look them up you're going to look up every post you're going to look up every tweet you're going to look up every status you're going to look up every story and that is that is exactly what karen did um she researched him and she said that he is not her type if somebody would have showed her him before all of this she would have totally not been attracted to him at all she also said that she looked at his ig story and he was just in his feelings he had feelings on feelings on feelings on feelings and he was just so overly emotional he, she, he was just overly emotional and that's just not her type at all and she just not attracted to him at all and she don't even know if she want to do this and okay okay first things first who sent this text i need to know where this text came from this is, did this come from her friends did this come from production because it's like she kind of made it seem like she was accidentally sent the text and that's what makes me think well maybe it could have been an accident or did production accidentally send that to her on purpose for a little drama so i need to know where the text came from and two girl your type the person that was your type was in a committed relationship with you and had a baby on you that is what came from a man that was your type you came to this process because this was supposed to be someone who is your perfect match they're matching you up with someone who is perfect for you in theory so for you to be so hung up on the looks it just i'm trying not to be too harsh because you know anybody in her situation that upon first glance looks at someone and sees that they're not attracted to but my thing i just i can't i it's hard for me to understand because when i look at miles he's attractive i think he's attractive i think he has a nice looking face like he might not have the fittest body type but you know he's not sloppy like he's he's put together he has a good job um you know, while while she's over here crying about this, he's literally sitting up here talking about how she's going to be the best match ever and how he can't wait to see her um, confident this will be perfect. I mean, he's sitting up there crying on his mama's shoulder. And yes, that's very emotional. But maybe you need someone who is emotional and that is going to take your emotions into account. Somebody like that is not going to go out and have a baby on you. And this is something that I've been trying to get out of myself. You know, I don't want to get stuck in a rut of my type or when I look at somebody and he's not exactly what I think I want to be with or what I picture, you know, my husband to look like. I won't give him a chance. I feel like in this situation, Karen was already a ball of nerves and she already was emotional she already was looking for a way out and this was a way for her to be like well i don't know if i want to do this because I, re I really i'm not really not attracted to him i already don't like him so you know i already was feeling like i didn't want to do this and now he's somebody i'm not attracted to so like you know i just feel like this is her way out kind of and i'm just like well you just don't need to do this like if you're gonna be that shallow where you just look at him and you already know and that's the reason why this wasn't fair because if somebody sent her that on purpose it's not fair for her to get to go look at his page and judge him he don't get that chance with you you know what I'm saying? Nobody else gets that chance. You have to literally meet them. And I feel like sometimes a per a face-to-face -face meeting 
will change will, that will have a completely different impression than your social media pages social media doesn't show every aspect of your personality that's just what you want to put out there this totally reminded me of jamie first season jamie and doug and can you imagine if jamie would have saw doug's social media before she ever married him she would have never walked down that aisle in the first place it was bad enough she the way she freaked out you know on her wedding day not to his face but she when she saw him she completely was not interested in him imagine if she would have saw how he looked a couple of hours before she would have never married him and she would have never found the love of her life after six years they are still married and have two children and an awesome job working as a host for married at first sight i'm sure that's a nice check so you know what i'm saying like it's complete i feel like that is completely however she got that text it was unethical and i'm upset about it i'm mad about it i'm more mad about that than how she reacted to it because i don't want to go into this girl too harshly because she was already in her feelings so i feel like she just even more so reacting on emotion but miles is attractive like i don't he's attractive he's one of the better looking people that's been on this show i don't understand it y'all i really don't get it but you know um and then it's crazy because also all the women agreed that they wanted a nice guy and when you see someone is a nice guy you can't handle it because he's too emotional but y'all let me know what you think down below let me know what you think about this whole karen and miles situation especially i would love to hear your opinion do you agree with me do you not agree with me and i hope you enjoyed this video and i'll see you in my next one peace